Good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we are looking at the transformed heart. And so we're going to be looking at the Apostle Paul a little bit today. But before I do that, I wanted to share a personal story. When I owned a business in landscaping and lawn maintenance in Florida, one of the hardest things was to keep employees. It was manual labor. It was in the hottest most humid environment. And so often I would get an employee, he would work for a while, and then he would quit because of the heat. And this meant I basically (laughs) had to take whoever was willing to work in those conditions. And oftentimes this meant for me that I would be hiring people that perhaps were just out of jail or had some kind of issues going on or emotional problems. It just worked out that way. But as an employee, or as an employer, I'm sorry, I also saw that as an opportunity to minister to people that were going through hard circumstances and maybe transitions in their life, especially those that were coming out of prison. And That being said, (laughs) I remember on one occasion when I had a really hot-headed employee and every time he would get aggravated, it would show because he would take whatever tool of my companies that he had in his hand and he would get so mad, you know, that he would just take it out on the equipment. And I remember one day... I was seeing him down the road and he was getting mad because he was weed eating and something happened. I don't know, he ran out of string or something and he flipped the handle and he took my weed eater by the metal part and he just started slamming it on a customer's driveway and just busting it to pieces. Well, needless to say, that was the last straw for me and I had to let that employee go, at which point He actually turned on me and began threatening me. And, you know, he was saying he was going to go around all my accounts and spray Roundup on the shrubs and on the lawn and just do all kinds of damage to get me back. And while he was telling me all this, I was trying to be loving towards him. And I said, listen, I know it's going to be hard for you to find another job. So I'm going to give you a severance package even though you destroyed my equipment, because I really want you to be okay. I just can't have you working for me anymore. (laughs) And uh, he was still mad, but I gave him the severance check, and he went his way. And I was thankful he did not end up spraying Roundup on any of my lawns. He didn't go around and destroy anything. I think my kindness and my love in the situation, uh, through God's grace, worked on his heart, and he knew also how patient I had been with him all along the way. Well, a couple years went by, and I was in seminary in Florida, and I was going back and forth to seminary, and I stopped at a gas station to get gas, and there he was. He was in the gas station with a big trailer with all kinds of landscaping and lawn equipment on it, and I was like, Uh uh-oh, you know, I wonder if he's going to see me. And he saw me, and he started walking over to me, and I was like, oh, man, this is, you know, I I, I was pumping gas, so I just kind of got into a defensive position. I was, you know, Army veteran, so I kind of know how to defend myself. (laughs) But anyway, he walked over to me, and he just said, he almost started crying. He said, man, I just want to apologize to you because you changed my life. And then he started to explain how, After I had fired him, he had gone through this soul-searching time in his life. He ended up getting married. He ended up starting his own business. He had some relatives that gave him some money because with his criminal record, he couldn't get any loans or anything, but he had family members help him. And he had started a lawn business. And the things I had taught him and things he had learned also in other jobs, he was putting into practice and he had it going on and he had gotten his life in order. He went through some 12-step programs. He was working with his anger. He was cutting back on his drink and all that stuff. So he, he really had like a 180 metamorphosis from this guy 
who was so hot-headed, the minute something happened, he was tearing up my equipment to a guy that was now a business owner and supplying for the needs of his family. And I was just thankful that I got to see that and that he acknowledged kind of how God used me in his life. And that's really what the Holy Spirit brought to my mind when I was reading the gospel reading today from Galatians. So we have this reading in Galatians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14, where we find something out about Paul and Paul saying, you know, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. And Paul was sharing that there was a time in his life that he adamantly fought against Christianity. He was one of the ones that was there when the martyr St. Stephen was being stoned, right? And this was not some passing thing. He was all in emotionally, spiritually, physically. He was a zealot persecuting Christianity and the whole movement, really. And he was invested and consumed with the anger over the whole idea of what he perceived from a very traditional Jewish perspective as a heresy that was unfolding in his community as people were becoming Christian, right? From him, this was heretical uh, in the, from a Jewish mindset. But then Paul goes on to share how he had this encounter with Christ, this eye-opening encounter on the road to Damascus. And this changed Paul. And one of the details that stood out to me as I read this passage in Galatians 1.18 was when Paul says, Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remain with him for 15 days. So I think that stood out to me because it was about three years that had passed since I had seen that employee that I was telling you about. And... You know, I had seen, when I saw him, the employee, I realized how much and how profoundly a person can really change, right? I, I realized that when I saw this employee. This is what can occur when someone has a genuine, very intimate experience with the divine, with God's transformative grace, right? However we're able to receive it, be it through circumstances in our life, be it through friends, be it through going to church, be it a mystical vision like in Paul's case, or maybe just reading on our own, or a masterful combination of all of those together in divine orchestration, in some sacred, synchronistic way, the fact is, by God's grace, people can truly change in an instant and be set on an entirely new path in life. And in Paul's case, we see how that played out later in our reading from Galatians. So we read in chapter 1, 21 to 24, and Paul's talking again. He says, Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ, they only kept hearing that the one who once was persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. And Paul went on, you know, to be someone that was just bent on persecuting Christians and destroying Christianity to being completely altered by a single vision that forever changed not only his opinions about Christianity, but also his entire mission in life. I mean, let's not miss that. This encounter was so incredible that it not only changed Paul's opinion about what he viewed at the time as heretical, but it changed it so completely that all of Paul's goals and all of Paul's purposes in life were transformed and shifted. And that teaches us something about the power of God's grace and personal transformation when we open ourselves up to change. 
And so what's the application today? It's this. Even the hardest hearts with God's grace, total transformation is possible. Even for the hardest hearts with God's grace, total transformation is possible. Well, thank you for joining me today as we have looked at the transformed heart. Thank you.